Well, welcome to another one of my videos. In this one, we're going to be looking at hand planes, but emergency ones again. Now, recently on the internet, I came across a, a, an amazing uh, cabinet making guru called uh, Paul Sellers. He's amazing. Check him out. Um, I learned a few things from him. Now, recently I made one of these emergency hand planes with my chisel, so that if you're out in the bush and you haven't got your hand plane with you, you can still make one. The first one I made was with a triangle in here, and it had the tendency to pop out on me all the time, so I used some screws and then figured out a way to make the blade adjustable in depth, which was quite good, and it's a good idea. But I also learned something from Mr. Sellers. I made one of these through his instructions, which is a rebate plane. It's a plane where the knife goes right to the edge, into the corner here, so you can get into the corner of things. Now, a good thing about that little hand plane is you can make it by hand, but also it can become a hand router. Now, hand routers are really useful, uh, but usually they're electrical these days, and these things are hard to come by because hardly anybody uses them manually these days, but they're really useful. So what you can do is make a very quick one like this and that knife can then be lowered to whatever depth you like and it can be used in an emergency situation as a router also as well as a rebate plane. It only takes about 10 minutes to make so let's go ahead and do it. Now what we're going to need apart from our chisel is a block of wood that's a little wider than our chisel and a block of wood to make a block out of. It can be a 2, a, a 3 or a 4 by 2 about this size. Then I'm going to take a piece of paper and fold it from corner to corner to get us a 45 degrees and place that more or less in the centre and mark it. Now here is one of the two main secrets that I learnt from Mr Paul Sellers is the angle of that wedge. Now if I have my block which is this wide I'm going to have four and a half times that. Four and a half to five. One, two, three, four, five. So four and a half to there. And then I'm going to draw an angle from that point to that point, and that gives me the angle that I want for my wedge. I'm going to be a little bit more rustic and rough and ready than Mr. Sellers, and I'm just going to put my stick on there, line it up with the 45 degree angle there with the wedge pointing downwards, and I'm going to tack it temporarily onto that block with a couple small nails. Now the second secret angle here that I learnt from Mr. Sellers was this angle here. Instead of being a 90 degree cut, I'm going to angle the blade so it's going to go in on an angle. I'm going to be fairly ergonomic here and conserve some energy by cutting through the wedge and into the block to give me the same angle on the two cuts. Rather than doing them separately like Mr. Sellers, I'm going to do them in one hit. Now I'm going to cut through both blocks and into the second block it's going to go as deep as my chisel width. So removing the wedge you can see that the angle of the wedge is an angle on this angle as well as the angle this way. So that's my wedge and now I'm going to cut this 45 degree angle down to the depth of my chisel. And that 45 degrees angle here is going to be a 90 degree perpendicular to the block. Then with the chisel you're going to remove that triangle of material. Now that I've taken all of that out, you can put that wedge in there and it should fit snugly and it will not come out because of that secret angle there. It won't come out. Now your uh, chisel here, it may not be parallel, it may be a wedge shape and so you've got to basically take that into account and draw that and take that wedge out as well or measure that before you do your 45 degree cut to compensate for the uh, wedge shape of your chisel. Now Paul Sellers uh, top of the wedge there, he'd take a notch out and round that round and then that's to knock the thing out. But I found you don't really need that and just chop it off there. So put your chisel and your wedge in and then just before the handle just chop that off. 
So there it is in its position and then I'm going to cut the tip off here and then also bevel down that way. So there's the point cut off there and then I'm going to cut an angle that way so that the chips come out that way. So that it ends up like this. We'll put that in there. One last thing to do is to put that wedge in there and we want it flush. So if you had a plane you could just plane it off. If not, well then you can run the saw down it and slice it off that way. So there it is basically functional but I think that block's a little bit too deep for the length of that blade so I might reduce it a bit, top or bottom or both, just so that, that knife, the chisel can go down a bit further. Now you can uh, screw a fence onto the bottom part of that just as a guide. Now to assemble and use it, put your chisel in more or less where you want it, put your wedge in, get your chisel to more or less the depth you want, tap that in, eyeball it down there so you can see it, and then to make the blade go down, tap it on this end and the blade will slowly go in, down, and then tap your wedge back in. If you want it to retract or raise the blade, tap on the other end and then make sure you just secure that back in until you get it the depth that you want it. Now to get the wedge out, Mr. Sellers one had this piece here that you could then tap it out like that, but I found you don't really need it, you just give it a good hearty whack on the back and it falls out. If your grain is going this way, that's okay, but if you want to go the other way, we'll just turn it over and make another one for the other side. So you can go down that way or that way, depending on which way the grain's going. Now at a pinch, you can use it as a router, lower your knife to the depth you want, and then you can just check that your groove that you've cleaned out with a chisel is now to the level that it's supposed to be. And there we are.